Hey, what is up and welcome back to Motion RC. I'm your product specialist, Wesley, and today I am super excited to be going over the all new Skynetic micro line of little airplanes that are gonna be available here at Motion RC. These are exclusively available here at Motion RC and motionrc.eu. For customers that are interested, we're gonna have them in FTR or Futaba transmitter ready or ready to run as the pit setting here is on the table. Uh, both of these models will come in both versions, but we're gonna go over the difference between an FTR and an RTR in this video today and kind of just show you around these little models and how to actually get them set up and ready to go fly. Super excited to show you this, but for right now, we're gonna get over to the pits and we're gonna show you exactly how it comes out of the box and how you get it set up. All right, so we have the little pits down here on the table. This is the ready to run version. As you can see, you're gonna get the transmitter, the stand, the model, a battery, and a charger for this airplane. Uh, now, as far as putting them together, they come pre-built right out of the box. All you gotta do is snap your little stand together. And then on the pits, when you're not using it on the stand, the same stand hole is for the provided landing gear. They just clip right in like so if you're wanting to use the landing gear same thing on your little stand here it has a place where you can just clip your transmitter in <clears throat> on the stand like so so for storage purposes it's really cool to keep these on the little stand you can have them on a shelf or something keep it out of the way that just snaps together this piece snaps into the bottom and these two pieces here snap right in Super easy. Now, on all of the models, you're gonna see they have this pop on and off style uh, nose cone and propeller. This is so when you land, if you were to have a bad landing, instead of breaking your prop, these just pop off. And then to put them back on, it's as simple as just lining them up and give them a little push to put them on. Super easy. So let's get into actually powering up your ready to run model for the first time. If you'll flip the model over, you can see there's a battery bay right inside. And something that you could definitely get as an extra is one of our Benchcraft screwdrivers. I highly recommend this multi-tool one. Just makes it a little easier to reach in here. Plus you have every tool to take this model apart with, with this little tool. Once you get that little lead up, we can slide the battery in. The battery does not move forward and backwards. Uh, so CG, as long as you're using the same batteries as uh, are recommended for the airplane, shouldn't have any issues with CG being off. Once you have that in there, we're gonna take our transmitter and we're gonna turn it on. We just hold the power button until we hear the noise. There we go. We want our stick down for the throttle. Everything else just centered. Now we can plug the model in. tuck our little wires inside and close our battery bay. Now we can put the model up on its uh, axis. I'll put it to where it's facing you guys. Now we can kind of just check everything. Ailerons, we can see we have left and right. We also have up and down on our elevator. And then this stick is our rudder channel, so rudder to the left and to the right. Now to initialize the gyro, it is off right now. And to also make it where the throttle works, as you can see, it's turned off right now. We have to go all the way to the top and then all the way to the bottom ones. This will initialize our throttle and it will also start our timer on this controller. What it's gonna do is make an audible beep every one minute uh, so you can count upwards. I would tell you to go for around eight minutes so just count to eight on the beeps and you should be good okay so at this point our gyro is actually turned on also and we can verify everything's working correctly by picking the model up and tilting it on its side as you can see right now it would always be trying to go back to neutral and we go over to the other side it's going to be trying to bring the model back to neutral just like so same thing for our elevator if we start to dive the model, we should see it giving up. If we start to climb, we should see it start to give down. 
just like that and it's going to be trying to keep the airplane neutral now this is in uh, 6g mode we also have this button on the top corner of our transmitter if we click it once that's going to take us into just standard stabilization mode so it's not trying to self-level anymore it is just trying to keep it stabilized you can hear it as you wiggle it around so this mode you're going to be able to do loops rolls uh, fly it just like a normal model uh, now i will say that this airplane definitely benefits from having a gyro it is very small we're talking 75 78 grams all up on this so you're definitely going to want to fly with the gyro on unless the weather is just absolutely perfect and there's no wind indoors no wind other than that i highly recommend having the gyro on because these little planes definitely get tossed around with it off speaking of gyro off if we push that top button again now we're in gyro off mode so as you can see no gyro we can bank it we can yank it it all works but there's no gyro but like i said i don't recommend flying it in this mode unless the weather is absolutely dead calm uh, and then to get back to stabilization you just click it one more time and we're back into stabilized uh, mode so the other thing i would tell you if you're new to flying take off in it in the bank limited mode uh, where it's always trying to self-level get it up in the air then click the button once to get into your gyro stabilized but not self-leveling mode if you get in trouble remember you got to push it twice to get back into that recovery mode so beep beep and now we're back into recovery all right now on this controller you also have this side over here that says expert and beginner this is your high rates and low rates if you push that you can actually check it uh, let's put it into normal mode all the way over to the side and if we push that button you can see we actually get more rates hopefully that's showing up for you guys on camera but when i click that high rates and low rates high rates and low rates that's everything i can go over on the ready to fly to get it set up uh, don't forget it also does come with an included charger and the battery the only thing you're going to need to add to the model is your four triple a batteries in the back of the controller that is all you need to add to the ready to fly to get it out and start flying it uh, it also has this loiter mode if you're up in the air uh, get it up at a certain altitude you can push that button and the airplane will fly around in a circle uh, just kind of a little thing i haven't really been using it much but it is something that you can do all right Let's get over to the Mustang now and check out the Futaba Ready version. All right, at this point, let's go over the FTR version of these models. What that stands for is Futaba Transmitter Ready, uh, and you're gonna be able to use any SFHSS protocol Futaba transmitter. In this case, I'm gonna be using the 16IZ, but you can use any of our more inexpensive transmitters that are available here at Motion RC. As you can see, this one still comes with a little display stand. It also comes with the charger and the battery. But I will also say, just like on the last one, if you don't have one of these Benchcraft multi-tools, I highly recommend picking it up as you're going to be able to fix almost anything on this model using that one tool. So let's get into what it actually takes to uh, bind our transmitter to our model. I'm going to pop it off the stand and get that out of our way. And I'm going to fire up my transmitter and get a new model going. So on the transmitter, we're going to take and go to uh, model select. We're going to go new model. Yes. We're going to go back into model select. We're going to pick our new model, which is not that one. It would be on the next page. Nope, I lied. It is that one new model i've actually already set this up in here once before but let's go on and just do this all fresh for you guys oops backspace two just so i know which one it is all right at that point we can go back to the home screen make sure it says mini two and it does 
The other thing we need to go on and do is set up channel five to any three position switch on the radio. So let's go to linkage, function, channel five is our gear channel, and we're gonna put it on whatever we want. At this point, I want it on SE, and it actually already is there. You can see gear is on switch SE. We can go back and go to our servo monitor just to make sure. Channel five gear, as we flip the position, we have all three positions of the switch. Perfect. Now it's time to actually bind this. So let's go over to the home screen, linkage menu, system type, and make sure we're on SFHSS. Perfect. At that point, we can go to the home screen and I'm gonna turn the radio off. Now we're gonna come over to the model and we're gonna remove the bottom wing. One thing you're gonna notice is this has standard servos in it uh, that we can actually replace if we ever have a damage to one of our servos. We're gonna take this one screw off the bottom wing. One thing you're gonna also notice with these airplanes is that you do not tape them together or glue them together. So repairing them, it's gonna be a breeze. We can lift that wing off at this point and slide it out. Be careful not to pull too far because we don't want to rip this out of the control board. As you can see, it's just plugged in right there if you do need to remove the wing while you're working on the model. While we're inside, let's show you a couple other cool things. So there's this wire coming out of this port right here. It is labeled S-Bus on this port. If we pull on that little wire there, there is our Futaba receiver with the bind button built right onto the top. What we need to do to actually bind this is plug in our battery. Hold the little bind button until the receiver starts to flash. As you can see the little red flashing button now. Now we can turn our transmitter on that we got set up earlier and wait for a few seconds and it should go solid. At this point we can just do a quick wiggle test to make sure everything's wiggling and we have successfully bound this to our Futaba receiver. At this point let's get the wing back on and we'll finish up the setup. All right so at this point we have our wing back on and our battery installed. All we need to do now is plug it in and we continue our setup process. So let's plug in the model, tuck our little wire down inside, and now we can close this and turn it over. Now, let's go on and verify everything is working. Left and right. Okay, so first thing I see, I'll put this here to make it even easier. When I go left, my ailerons are going the wrong way. So when you go to the left, you should see the left aileron go up. No big deal. Let's go into our transmitter now to our linkage menu. Let's go to servo reverse. And we're gonna go to our ailerons and reverse that channel. Now we can verify that it worked. Oops. Oh, I did the elevator. Let's go back. Ailerons. Yes. There we go. Helps if I do the wrong channel, I'm looking at it weird. So now when we go to the left, our left aileron is going up, which is correct. When I go to the right, our right aileron goes up, which is also correct. As you can see, to the left, left aileron up. To the right, right aileron up. Now we can check our elevator. When we pull back on the stick, the elevator should go up. So that is also incorrect. So let's go on and reverse the elevator channel. Now when we pull back on the stick, the elevator goes up. When we push the stick down, the elevator goes down. Last thing to check is our rudder. When we go to the left, this should be pointed to the left. That is incorrect. So let's go on and reverse that channel also. Now when we go to the left, we have left. To the right, we have right. Now all of that is working correctly. Now it's time to test our gyro. Now remember, the gyro will not be on 
when you plug it in at first. You have to actually initiate the throttle first. So let's bump the throttle for just a second. That's all it takes. And now our gyro is turned on. So let's verify our gyro corrections are the right way now. If we bank the model to the left, we should see the right aileron go up. This is going to be bringing the model back to centered, which is what we want to see. If we dive the model, we should see the elevator giving up, which we do. And as it comes back down, it should go back to centered. If we climb the model, it should give a bunch of down. As it does, and as we bring it back to neutral, you should see that. Now the rudder is very small input, but it is working. You can see that. Uh, it's hard to explain how to do this one, but if you move the rudder this way to the right, you should see it correct into the turn. So as I move it, I should see the rudder turn. This way, this way, and that's correct. So now we verified everything is working. The next thing we wanna check is that our three position works. So if we tilt it up on its side and flip it into the second position, you can see everything went back to neutral, but the gyro is still on. So it's in stabilization mode, but without self-leveling at this point. And our last thing to check is that we have gyro off now by flipping the switch into the last position. And our gyro turns off. And then self-leveling. At this point, we have everything set up correctly. We just need to give ourselves some rates. What I like is 100% uh, throw with 20% expo. And then my second rate I went to 80% throw with 20% expo. And remember, it's negative, negative expo on Futaba. So make sure when you're dialing it in, you put that negative expo in. And then for my third and final shot, I did 60% throw with 20% negative expo all around. And that gave me my three position switch of uh, rates. Now it's a little bit different depending on whatever uh, transmitter you have, but just know those were the rate settings I used to personally set this up and I really liked it. All right, at this point, we're gonna go over a few additional things that are available in these models. Now, these are the FTR or Futaba Ready uh, receivers, but if you're a customer that flies Spectrum, it is easy to change this over to a Spectrum system again. Let's go on and flip the Mustang over and I'm gonna show you this. Pop the wing back off. And inside you can simply take and pull the Futaba board out. I'm gonna leave mine in for now. But you simply would pop out the Futaba one that's plugged into the S bus and you would take a Spectrum uh, DSMX uh, little satellite receiver and you'd plug that into the port right next to the S bus one. So it's as simple as plugging that into the port there that is labeled DSM, and then go on and pop this guy out. Now, Spectrum does have a few different versions of satellite receivers. Make sure you're getting the one that has three wires. As you can see, this satellite here has four wires. This one will not work in this airplane, so you need to make sure you're getting one of their satellites that has the three wires if you want to be able to run this on here. Then it's as simple as programming channel 5 to a three position switch to get all three of your gyro settings and making sure that all of your control surface corrections are just like we did on the Futaba where they're all going the right way. And then you would simply tuck that little RX back into the tail and put your wing back on. Now while we're in here, I also want to go over the fact that the little servos are pretty easy to access. If you do ever have to replace this board that the two servos are mounted to, this board is actually just held in there with two screws. So you can actually unscrew the board, put a new one in to replace it if you ever have an issue with it. Now let me get the wing back on and we'll go into the actual maintenance up here on the front of the airplane and show you how easy it is to work on that also. All right, now on that ease of maintenance uh, for these airplanes, I wanna show you how easy it is to change the motor in this airplane. So just like on the pits, 
The Mustang also has a removable prop that just pops on and off. So you're definitely gonna probably be belly landing this most of the time. It does come with landing gear if you wanna use them, but it really only works on very smooth concrete. Uh, it's really designed to be more of a hand toss airplane. A Mustang's gonna look better without the landing gear anyway. So when you land wrong, this just pops off and uh, as simple as pushing it back on. Now, if you ever do burn up your motor, it is made to be very easy to fix this. Once again, if we have that Benchcraft screwdriver, you can just re simply remove the two screws up here on this red cowling. Then we simply slide that little red cowling off. which reveals our access to our motor and our gearbox. In order to get into the motor and the gearbox, remove the two front screws. And if you're actually gonna take it all the way off, you would need to have the wing off so you can unplug the motor from the board. But for just to show you this, how simple it is, you can actually slide the whole motor and gearbox tray out of the airplane. And that is as easy as getting the motor in and out to replace it is. And to put it back in, it's just those steps in reverse. All right, the last thing we need to cover is for customers that are gonna buy the ready to fly version, but want to be able to bind it to their Futaba transmitter or a Spectrum transmitter after the fact. They've really enjoyed it, but they wanna go on and move up to a real hobby grade transmitter. Uh, you will have to buy the Futaba receiver that just plugs into the board like I showed you, or a Spectrum receiver to plug straight into that board if you wanna do that. Uh, the Ready to Fly does not come with the receiver to be able to bind it to either Spectrum or Futaba. You'll need to add that. Uh, it has a protocol built into the board that works with this Ready to Fly controller and this Ready to Fly controller only. Uh, but you can upgrade it at a later date by adding that item. We will have them available in the upgrade sections down here on motionrc.com if you want to do that. All right, so that wraps all this up. I hope you have decided to check one of these guys out. They are available now here at motionrc.com and motionrc.eu. Uh, I'm excited to see customers start getting these little park planes out and flying these Skynetic minis. They are a blast to fly. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I'm sure we have the videos up of both of these models flying now, and uh, we've had a lot of fun with them here on the channel. As always, if you get one and you want to share it with some of your fellow pilots, you can always check out the Motion RC Facebook customer community. There's always guys repainting. I can't wait to see some little repaints on the Mustang of these and then guys getting out and kind of flying them together. It's going to be a lot of fun. And as always, whether it's land, sea, or air, Motion RC has everything you want. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.